Thank you for joining us on the RP Experience. I'm your host, Andrew Regenhardt, and today we have Adam Sheets, one of our top producing agents here locally. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Been yeah. looking forward to this for a long time. I got that text message. I was super stoked. So jumped on uh, it. Glad to be here. Yep. <laughs> well, hey, glad we could make it work. Um, so a little bit about Adam. Adam is a top producing agent here in Southwest Florida, uh, and with the Remax Realty team. Both Adam's parents are in real estate, and both of uh, both got into the business back in 2004, which uh, well, he was 13 years old at that time. After graduating high school, Adam attended Full Sail University. He just later decided to get into real estate during Adam's second year in real estate, which is impressive. He closed 23 transaction. And at that point, he knew he found his place in real estate. Outside of real estate, Adam enjoys spending time with his wife, Zoe, and their dog, Brewer, um, his family, his friends. Um, Adam was also a big golfer, and he said previously that he's done many contracts on the golf course, which is awesome, and a lot of deals happen. You know, not deals, but like relationships. So it's cool that uh, you can incorporate work and play together. Yeah, and... <clears throat> Real quick, I just a, a lot of people use the golf course as a place to find new business. Right, I operate it a little bit differently because when I am on the golf course, that's my that's my zen time. Mm. Um, so yeah, I've worked on contracts and stuff, but a lot of people will go play golf to meet new people. Right, and for me, and I'll get crucified by a lot of agents for saying this, but when I'm there, I don't want to talk about my work. Mm. I want to play golf, and I that's my that's my hobby. That's what I do to get relax, away yeah. from work. I'm trying to relax and just unwind. Yeah, um, you're crazy, and because so, golf is not relaxing. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, that's just kidding. true. Um, <laughs> the game the being outside is is great, but gosh, it's the most up and down frustrating. You have like you know you drive it perfect, and then you go to you know nice little seven iron up. Oh, you know, yep. dig a big divot and three hundred yard drive. Yeah. 10 yard chip shot yep. that yeah love it love it's it it's a terrible but, game hey it's a great game so all right who are you adam tell us i mean i know who you are but sure give us give us a down low um yeah so obviously adam sheets and uh I uh, moved here from Texas in 2001. Mm -hmm. My uh, where in Texas again? Odessa, Texas. Okay. So yep. if you've seen Friday Night Lights, yeah, that's where I'm from. And there's oil rigs and high school football. That's about it. Uh, you remember I, I lived in San Antonio for a while. Yeah, right? I do remember that. Yeah, yep. my fiance's in was he in Houston for a while. Yep. So I, I love Texas. I do miss a lot of parts of Texas. It's but. a great state. I'm proud to say I'm you know from yeah. Texas. Yeah. Um, always had family ties here. My parents were originally from here, actually. And okay. My dad's dad moved to Odessa, um, and then uh, we moved there. Um, or sorry, they moved there, had me and my brother. Then we moved back here in 2001, um, and my my mom's my grandpa still lived here. Yeah. So um, yeah, we've kind of always been around Southwest Florida, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a coincidence that we ended up back here. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad got a job offer. He used to manage dental practices before real estate. And, uh, so we ended up back here and then a couple of years after we moved here, they basically were sick of the nine to five and missing like me and my brother's soccer games and hockey games and all that kind of stuff. Right. So, uh, they took the plunge and went into real estate and, uh, and then fast forward many years and I saw the, really what happened was I saw the jobs that my friends were getting out of college and yeah. they were like, um, you should, why don't you get your real estate license? And I said, absolutely not. I'm kind of skipping ahead here, but basically uh, growing up, everybody always said that I was going to be a realtor. They're like, you know, your parents are realtors. You're going to end up being a realtor. All right. And I said, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that job. <laughs> I refuse to do that job. And now I'm, now I'm here on the Real Producers <laughs> podcast. So uh, I love it. It ended up working out pretty well. And then I, you know, it's, it's a great job, but yeah, from Texas, moved here. Um, Grew up skateboarding, video. I, I've always been involved in video, so that's kind of a mm -hmm. big thing for me. Um, and just action sports, and then um, I kind of use that to to. When did you get into golf? Like, obviously, I yeah. So I had a lot of free time in college, and there was okay. a course right next to the school I went to that uh, I think we paid like ten dollars to play. Oh wow! And which was like right in line Can't with my two hundred dollar a month budget or whatever. Right, I had. right, right, and. Um, so I just started playing golf up in Orlando all the time in like 2012. And then I, yeah, just carried it on. And that's a regular part of my life. Two, three days a week. Love it. Um, and, you know, I work while I'm on the golf course. So, yeah. All right. So you kind of mentioned the video editing, right? Take that back here. Video editing, posting, 
and I do know this through the article and everything, you actually were posting on MySpace back in the day, right? Yeah, the uh, OG. Which, pe- the, which people were like, what the heck is MySpace? Um, but uh, that is the OG, the original one, right? So obviously things have changed a lot, right? And, and w- But what's still true about video creation? So it, it's a long, it's a, I'll try to make a long answer short, but when I was originally making content, it was all, I grew up skateboarding. Like I said, I did action sports forever, wakeboarding, skateboarding, windsurfing, everything with a board, you name it, I did it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the only way to, and this was back when like the video cameras that you would use were, you know, the size of like a uh, size of a Range Rover, <laughs> literally and, massive, like, yeah. massive. And they had actual tapes and whatnot. So uh, me and my buddies, we just started using my dad and mom's camcorder to record ourselves skateboarding. And then that led into figuring out how to edit video. And then I was like, well, you know, what's kind of cool is when you post these videos, when you see a lot of people watching them. So how can we make, how can we produce the best content with zero dollar budget to, um, you know, generate the most views back in the MySpace days. And mm-hmm. it worked out really well. I mean, we would, we were posting videos and back then, I don't know, you know, relatively to now, I don't know what. Um, a good number of views would have been, but, um, you know, we'd get two, three, 4,000 views on a skateboard video, which right. at the time it, uh, I don't even know how, I guess I would have been between age 13 and maybe 17 or right. so. Um, you know, it felt it was, it was really rewarding and cool. And then always creating stuff that, that made people go, Oh, whoa, what was that? What did I just see? And then when I got into real estate, which was years removed from that, um, I said, it's still the same principles. It creates stuff that people want to watch and people are going to react to and share. So when I was doing a lot of video, when I first started real estate, I just copied the same formula, hook, line, sinker. It's, you know, it's, it's mm-hmm. what everybody's done in video forever. And I was getting a lot of people pre-approved and I was getting a lot of people interested in like, my, so I'm 31, actually turned 32 next week. Um, but, um, I kind of grew up with my, like when I first got into this business, it was all people who were like graduating college and were getting their first jobs and their first real dose of like a little bit of, you know, career money where they could buy their first house. So I just made every video catering to people that had three and a half percent down and wanted to buy their first house. And we kind of grew up through the ranch together. So now those people who bought their first house for 200 grand are selling that house for 500 grand to buy a $700,000 house because of videos that I posted almost nine years ago. And not, obviously, you know, it's a, it's a, it's evolved a lot. It's evolved a lot and it's relationship business. And I've maintained that relationship. They still see me posting stuff. I don't do as much video anymore but they still see me posting like the static images and whatever on, on Facebook. And yeah, but you, what, what people are, might not understand is that you got their first interest. Like you, you, you acquired their interest first, right? Um, a huge part. I'm, I love listening to other people, podcasts, whatnot, and learning. And, you know, um, Rich, uh, Ryan Pineda, um, mm-hmm. you know, I listen to him a lot. And he literally says, he's like, you just got to get them in. Right now, you do got to maintain it a lot, and there's a lot of work that goes into it. But once you get them in, as long as you have good quality, you'll you'll maintain them for a lot, and they'll go into to sister companies, whatever it is. But obviously, in this case, you maintain them as a client. Yep. Um, so, do you think that was a testament to why you had, you know, in second year, you had 23 transactions, or was that other reasons? I mean, was video creation kind of the driving factor because of that? 100. percent Video partnered with, I mean, Facebook in general. You'll hear, you'll hear, uh, he'll hear me harp on Facebook a lot. And it's because um, I, I still do 97% ish of my business from Facebook. And that's not paid ads and boosted posts and this and that, which has evolved over the years as well. I used to be able to literally pinpoint a 32 year old guy that's a doctor making $350,000 or more a year. You could get it that specific. Now you can't do that anymore. But um, so it's about kind of tricking the algorithms now to still reach, you know, whatever clientele you want to reach. Um, but the original videos that I was posting about the home buying process, and this was before anyone in town was doing video because I got on this train very early. Cause the first day that I started in real estate, I went, okay, how do I do the same thing I did with skateboarding and wakeboarding videos in 2011 or whatever? I know I guess it would have been like 2007 and eight. Um, how do I do that with real estate mm-hmm. and, you know, get, get people excited and interested. Um, 
So of that, of those 23 that year, 21 of them came from Facebook. They came from people seeing my videos and seeing my posts and just organically reaching out to me because nobody knew. And so when I sat down at my desk, when I first started, that's what I was going to say. I, um, start, I just, I just said, how do I, how do I reach the most people as fast as possible for as cheap as possible? Because when I got in this business, I didn't have any money. Of course, mm -hmm. the first thing I guess, well, your parents were realtors. Yeah, but I didn't want to do it like my parents did, which is right. why when they said you need to get your farming areas together and do this and mailers and blah, blah, blah. I said, I do not want to do that. I want to do it my own way. So I hit Facebook. So that second year, literally 21 of the 23 came from Facebook because of what people were seeing me post in a time when no other realtors in Southwest Florida, of course there were some, I don't know every realtor, but <laughs> of my circle, nobody, no one in my office or offices that I knew of were doing any type of video or really any type of Facebook marketing in general, because at that time, even though it wasn't that many years ago, it was still super new to use social media as we now use it in 2023. A lot of people say, well, you're using Facebook. You must be using a business page, right? Is that true or is it more personal? No. So we, so we have, we have our sheets team, Facebook page, which is yeah. the number one followed real estate Facebook page in Southwest Florida, just so everybody <laughs> knows. Um, and uh, plug, plug. Um, and, uh, so we have that and that's, you know, just listed under contract, all those kind of posts. It's, it's restaurant reviews. It's all the stuff that you need to have, but it's not necessarily a hard sell of like, Hey, we have this program through our preferred lender, this down payment, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's just basically to create content to share out to like our team members, mm -hmm. personal pages, mm -hmm. because there's so many business pages that it's, it's nobody, nobody cares. Nobody cares about your business page. Um, even the amount ours, of times like, I see a pending or a closed, whatever I'm like, oh. yeah. And that's, that's all any agent ever seems to post is just closed just pending, whatever it's gotta be engaging stuff. So we use the business page, parallel to our personal pages and the personal pages where we're making the human connection. Nobody connects with the sheets team. They connect mm -hmm. with Adam sheets. Um, so you have to have both. I fully believe that, but I, unless you're doing really high level paid marketing through Facebook business page is not where you're generally going to get your leads from, or if you do get the leads, it's just going to be you're going to get a lot of, Hey, is this available? And then it's like Facebook marketplace. Like, right. Hey, is this available? Yeah, it is It's a million dollars. Okay. Bye. You know what I mean? Um, right. And so I think the personal page is really where the, where the traction comes from. Yeah. I think the business page, even from our standpoint, like the business page is just almost like a credibility yeah. in a sense, like page, like, mm -hmm. it's just like, Oh, like Naples real producers. Okay. It's there. Yeah. They have it. They do some cool stuff. Cool. But like, Personal brand is so much more important, right? Mm -hmm. Out of sheets, even though, yes, you have a correlation of sheets and sheets team, yeah, right? Like, yeah. okay, great. But it's still at the end of the day, it, it's you and your brand mm -hmm. of your name, right? Um, and that's where the business comes. And that's where, you know, obviously they want to work with you in that way. Um, so it's so important for people to grow their their personal pages. I, I tell everyone, you know, your Instagram, your Facebook, like use it. Yep. hundred percent. And I mean, when we bring new agents on the team, we just brought a new guy on literally Monday. And I told him I was, the first question I asked people when we're interviewing them is how many people are you friends with on Facebook? And usually they're like a couple hundred, you know, friends, family. And I'm like, you got to get those numbers up because it's a free audience of 5,000 people. And I'm not going to give away all my secrets on this podcast because it's local realtors that I'm talking to, but, um, but it's, it's free. It's a free, it's a free yellow pages of 5,000 people that you can yeah. track. And I, I use my Facebook, I use Facebook and Siri as my CRM and, uh, which I would have to dive into further, but, um, why would you not take advantage of a free 5,000 people? You know how much it costs to reach 5,000 people if you were doing mail or whatever other right. avenue you want to go down. I mean, hundreds or thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. I've got a free 5,000 I can reach out to mm -hmm. right now if I wanted to. Um, and and Instagram is even more than that. hundred percent. And it got a little weird when Facebook bought Instagram. Um, right. It kind of changed everything for both platforms. But, um, and back to the video for a second. So in 2014 or 15, I read an article that by like 2022, Facebook was going to be like almost 90% video. 
they pretty close to nailed it because Facebook is, I mean, I don't know the exact percentage. It's a lot of video, which, is, and because of that article, that's why I started doing video so long ago because I knew I needed to be ahead of the curve. Yeah. Um, but again, I've definitely, and it's come with just being in the business almost a decade now. I've slowed down the video. It's so much referral based now um, that I honestly, I got a little lazy. But when I am doing videos, when I get back on little tangents where I'm doing it regularly, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not unusual to do some sort of a video that's real estate related that's actually engaging and not just check out my new listing. Here's my open house with my shaky phone walking around. You know what I mean? Um, where I would get, you know, three, four, five people pre-approved off of one Facebook video. Yeah. you And you even did, <laughs> you even did coaching on this, right? Like you even helped other people. Yeah. I, I've seen it. I'm, I'm part of a lot of random groups and different things. I've seen you do some of it. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that. Yeah. So uh, it was right. Because everyone's doing that, right? Everyone's got the shaky, the, the Everybody. camera and the, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Right. They yeah. all need help. Right. Yeah. Oh, and it's tough. Video is hard, especially if you're on camera. It's very difficult to be on camera. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about this before the podcast started. It, it does something to your brain. Right. Yeah. And um, so during when, when COVID first started and every realtor in the country said, oh my God, how am I going to make a living for as long as this lasts before we realized everybody in the world was going to buy a house. Um, and so it was just on various Facebook pages, people were asking, what are you doing? What, where's your business coming from? What do you plan to do? And I, I started telling people, I would comment and just say, hey, over 97% of my business comes from Facebook. And um, if you want my cheat sheet, I'm happy to send it to you. And literally thousands of people reached out to me about that on two separate occasions, um, which turned into a little bit of a coaching business and which, which was awesome, but it got a little, it got a little carried away. And so it's, it's, I've kind of brought it back to earth and kind of trying to dial it in. Yeah. Um, but ultimately that's, that's where I want to go in this business anyways. But I think uh, that's, I think that's a, a valid point that, there's so many people that still want to learn. There's still so many people that do want to do video creation. They understand the power of it. They understand the personal brand, whatever it might be. Short form, form, form I can't talk. Short form, form video is so powerful, right? Mm -hmm. um, all that kind of stuff, you know, but it's like, where do we start? Yeah. You know, how do we just at least get the ball rolling? And I tell people, I'm I'll, even in my office, I'll say, just start. Mm -hmm. And the problem is when people start doing video or honestly, even when people just start posting stuff on Facebook for the first time, because the amount of agents that I talk to, they're like, yeah, I have a Facebook. I've never posted a single thing on it. And then I do my whole spiel about the 5,000 free people and blah, blah, blah. Um, but they don't even want to post a static image because they're worried that somebody's going to be judging it. And I'm like, nobody cares. It's not that serious. And any video creator in the world will tell you to just post it. And it's not going to be perfect. You're always going to find something yourself that's wrong with whatever you post. Mm -hmm. And, but the general public is not going to see that imperfection in it. So just right. post it. We had a girl on our team like seven years ago who she wanted to do an intro video to her, her sphere saying, Hey, I'm now with our previous company and blah, blah, blah. Um, and it took her like 10 hours to do the video. It was a 60 second video because it wasn't perfect every single time. And I'm like, not only did you just waste a ton of time doing it, but <laughs> nobody can tell the difference between that first video and the hundredth version of it that you right. made. You should have just posted it. Um, they just, just overthink it. And, and I do it too. Like everyone, I you've do it. done it. Like we've all done it. And I think that's what people need to understand that they're not alone. They're not on an island and they're the only ones, right? Mm -hmm. I struggle every single time yep. while we're recording this right now, I'm working at doing. So by the time this comes out, probably people will see it, but like I'm currently working on like an interview style short form with some of our partners mm -hmm. and, and I'm literally just using the phone, right? Cause it's convenient. And oh my like, God, I don't know if I'm sounding right. I don't know if this is right. Usually I got Kobe, right. Helping out with all the video editing and different things. And like, you know, he's got the expertise so I can rely on him. But like, I'm trying to do it where it's like more personable, yep. right? More authentic or raw, right? Like they call it. Um, and man, I am second guessing myself all the time. And it's hard to come up with, oh, what should I say here? Or was that sounding right? And, and then the recipients, they're like, did I say it right? I'm, you know, and you're almost having to coach them and stuff. So everyone struggles with the same thing. Yep. And then today we just got to do it. We just yep. got to get it out there. And it's the only way to prove. Just post it. Just, just literally post it. It's, it's, it's the best content I think for realtors is, is the basic stuff. How do you buy it? 
and this is this is something that I think a lot of agents that have been in it for a while will will kind of steer away from myself included. We forget when you've been doing it so long that there's a lot of people out there that don't know how to buy a house. And not everybody is buying a $20 million house. So there's actually a very, very, few, very, very small amount. <laughs> less than 1% of the entire world can buy a $20 million mm-hmm. house. So it's like 0. 0.01. But probably yeah, 0. Yeah. 0, maybe even less. Probably less but, than that. Um, so educating the people that don't can't do that is still important. And they still ask questions. The amount of times I still have somebody tell me, well, my dad said I need 20% down to buy a house. I'm like, I don't know when that was the case that you had to have 20% down before my time in real estate, mm-hmm. but that's not the case. So some of my best content I've ever made was the simple questions. How do you buy a house? What does it cost to buy a house? How long does it take to buy a house? Those are the simple questions you can answer for people that they don't know. Um, that I think as realtors, we assume people do know, and that's not the case. Yep. <clears throat> Go out post it, make the, make whatever you think is the faults and move on and learn from it. I've made so many mistakes. Mm-hmm. I've like tried to record things. <laughs> Kobe's got probably years at this point, I feel like of blooper reels, right? Like, I mean, I always make mistakes, but it's just how you learn, mm-hmm. right? Um, in any business, but it's so critical. And I just, I encourage people to go out and make the content. Um, you're gonna spread your awareness, your personal brand, your business is gonna grow from it and you're personally gonna learn from it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you only grow when you're uncomfortable, right? And in, in, in a comfortable situation. So yeah. go do it. Um, I'm going to switch gears to golf for a second. Let's I personally love golf. I love golf. Um, let's let's it's, talk about it. Yeah, it's it's fun game. It's a challenging game. It has its highs and lows, that's for sure. Um, it's also the most frustrating game, right? So um, <laughs> there's a, a, a script, um, excuse me, a skit. Um, and I'm drawing a blank on, on who it was. Um, but anyways, it's like, let's do this game where... We are going to try to hit Robin Williams. Thank you. That, I was like, yeah, Robin Williams, RIP. But like Robin Williams talks about like, let's play this, you know, game of trying to hit this hole or like, excuse me, this ball into a gopher hole that's 300 yards away in the shortest amount of times with these sticks. And then let's put bunkers. <laughs> let's put sand. Yeah, <laughs> sand and some water around it. Oh, and then let's do it 18 times. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, right? So um, golf, right? Uh, actually, Bill Earls was on this podcast and literally said, uh, which is number one the year before, and uh, he says the best networking, best advice he could give is to play golf, right? Now, you stated earlier, I actually don't, you don't do that, right? Yep. You like to zen. Now, do you ever do give and take? Like, do you ever do that? Or if, like, some- if it gets if it gets brought up on the golf course, which okay. inevitably does, because everybody wants to know about real estate. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's a little different because I play with the same group pretty much all the time. Gotcha. So that's why it's for me. It's you know, it's my go hang out and just have fun time. Um, but occasionally I will go play alone, and the conversation on the golf course is, "Hey, I'm Adam. Hey, I'm Jim. Okay, nice to meet you." Then two holes later, so what do you do, Jim? What do you do, Adam? I'm in real estate. Oh, how's the market? So it does naturally happen a lot of times, mm-hmm. but I will. Not, I don't go out of my way to do it. Um, but Bill Earls, the goat, is not. Um, you know, he's not wrong. Yeah. It's, and I think I think most business professionals will tell you the golf course is one of the best places to network ever. Um, and but, I think too, what people are missing, it's not the golf. It's not like like when you're playing golf. Like if me and you are going out playing, we're still talking about the game. We're talking about that shot. We're talking about this. We're we're BSing around. Yep. What most of the time happens if you're actually going to talk business, it's usually afterwards. You get done with sure. that round of golf and you want to grab some lunch or something like that. You mm-hmm. want to grab a snack. Usually that's when the the, the actual quote unquote business talk, sure. right? You know, and sometimes that's not even the case because what happened is for four hours you built a great relationship. And you know enough about what they do through some questions Mm -hmm. that you want to further that relationship, which then turns into business. People always think, so I'm going to go out there and I'm going to talk about my business. Yeah, you're going to go out there with your MLS on your phone and say, hey, I have these listings available right now. Are you interested? It doesn't work like that. But it is. So again, I don't don't go out of my way to do it, but naturally it does come up, usually at the bar after the round. Yep, exactly. Um, 
and I think what's so beautiful about the the game of golf, there's so many aspects that you can learn about someone, right? It, it obviously is an honor system. There's a lot of respect. There's a lot of um, rules. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. There's a lot of things where you start to see. Okay, is that an honest person? You know, is that is there integrity there? You know, how do they handle pressure? Yep. Um, how do they handle when you know they shoot bad? Are they going to lose it and, and throw a throw fit? clubs in the yeah, exactly. water? Move breaking along. breaking clubs, whatnot. Right, like yeah. you start to see a lot about individual, and you get to know them. And 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 that's again goes back to that relationship building. Yeah. So. Um, that's, I mean, the, honestly, the best, the best events for a realtor to play golf in are member guest tournaments mm -hmm. and courses. I will say those, that's a straight up feast of new clientele. So I play, I play in a member guest every year and, uh, veranda. Okay. And they, uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've gathered quite a few email addresses and phone <laughs> numbers from, um, from that member guest. So in that case, I'm seeking it out, but I mean, when you're playing in a member guest, I don't want this to come. I don't know how this is going to come across. Probably not well, but you're dealing with people, depending on the club, that are paying thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year for a membership. It's a certain clientele that's a member at some of these courses, mm -hmm. so you know what kind of client you're going to be getting mm -hmm. if, um, you know, if a relationship does come from it. Right. That makes sense. I mean, it's just the same as like a dealership right like a, a high-end dealership versus a low-end dealership you know in a sense of like price point mm -hmm. like if they're kind of driving those cars like they automatic i mean you can't be making fifty thousand a year and be driving a bentley right it just doesn't make sense right exactly. <laughs> so it's yep. not not like you should judge them right and no, it's, it's not, not about, a judge thing it's but not it's about like, what they make like it's not what they drive right at the end of the day you know or or like let's say what course you know different things yep. but it's simple math it's just like it's it's like if you're paying 50 work. grand a year for a membership somewhere then you probably have a house that's at least probably whatever listen, it costs yeah. and if you're paying five grand a year for a membership because that's your max budget for membership, then it's a different, yeah. it's yeah. a different price point. It's, it's just fine. Is. Yeah. That's, that's going to come across really bad. But. It's not though. <laughs> it's not like, you know, and if they do, well, so be it, you know, exactly. Everyone's going to troll. Everyone's going to, you know, whatever. Uh, but at the end of the day, like we understand what you mean. And yeah, it's a, it's so true. So, well, good, Adam. <clears throat> Guess what? We're out of time and um, it cool. flies by. Yeah, for sure. So um, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on this podcast. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I was, yeah. Super stoked on it. Can't yeah. wait to hear it. Yeah, it'll be good. So um, as always, RP, Extreme, uh, RP Experience is extremely thrilled to have you on here. Uh, we're here at VentureX in the podcast. Studio.